Hello guys, welcome to Redditor's Revenge. Here we post amazing revenge stories daily. And if you want more content like this please do subscribe to the channel and stay tuned with us. Moving to our today's first story, about how Opus was terminated illegally because he tried to speak out against the shady activities his employer was doing. So he plotted vengeance and shut down the entire retail chain. So, on to the story. At one point in my life, I found myself bored. I needed to spend cash, but at the same time, like any typical college student, I needed a job that would work around my class hours. Enter C Corp. C Corp was a locally owned chain of gas stations in the southeastern part of Georgia and parts of Florida. I forget the total number of stations, but it was under 50 if that matters. I applied and was given a simple clerking position, where I would work weekends and two nights a week for a total of about 32 hours a week on average, sometimes more, sometimes less. I worked there for about a year when I was offered a position to help reopen a store to renovate it after a fire, with the promotion to assistant manager. My hours were going to obviously change, but by the same token, I gained better pay and a new day shift which would help things out. To be quite honest, I even debated taking some time off from school to concentrate on the job as it was entirely possible I would be promoted to manager of my own store before long. There were veiled hints and suggestions of that very thing happening in a few months as it were. I never got that far, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. It didn't take long for me to start noticing some issues with the store and the company as a whole, issues which I did my level best to correct. We were nearing hunting season turkey and then deer, and to cater to this, the stores started getting in several pallets of ammunition. So, now we had to figure out how to display the various types of shotgun shells and rifle bullets, while also doing our level best to ensure things didn't get in the way. It was around this time that I found myself speaking with the store manager, having been called on the carpet, as the saying goes for refusing to sell ammunition to a customer. I explained to the manager that I had attempted to check the ID on the customer, who refused to give it. So, I told the manager that I knew full well this was illegal, as ID was required by state law, and you had to be 18 to buy them. That started me on the path that would lead to my termination a few weeks later. I started noticing company memos popping up in the office, all that dealt with company practices regarding ammunition. One even went so far as to say that it was a terminable offense to refuse a sale of shotgun shells to a customer, regardless of age. That one vanished a few days after it went up, with me suspecting someone in the legal department realized the trouble they could get into with it. However, the flow of ammo didn't stop. A week before my termination, things got worse. The state in question has the lottery, of which the lion's share is scratch-off tickets. You know the type. Pay a buck scratch-off and hope you win something. Now, the lottery states on the back of every single ticket that the retailer who sold it must pay up to $599 in winnings. Anything above that has to be claimed at the central lottery office in the state's capital. Retailers are warned that should they refuse to pay this, there are instructions on how to do this with a money order. Then they can be fined by the lottery commission, or worse. Imagine my surprise then when I'm written up for following the lottery commission policy and paying out on a $300 win for a customer. I was told, point blank, that company policy was not to pay out anything more than $100, regardless of what the lottery commission said. The final straw, before my eventual termination though honestly, I quit, they still listed me as terminated came when training another cashier. The very next day, the count came up short by exactly $100. I refused to sign the write-up, which meant the company would have to investigate it, or so I thought. The same day, the district manager called the store and made some veiled threats about calling the police over this, and left me with the note that if the count comes up $100 over today, he won't say anything. Oh hell no he didn't. I waited till the manager returned from her meeting, dropped all my keys on the counter, and told her directly I'm done. I walked out and didn't look back. I was pissed, pissed at the treatment I'd been given over my time working there, pissed at being called a thief, pissed at what I knew the company was doing to my little community, and pissed that as far as I could tell, they'd get away with it. That's when I hatched a plan of revenge. First and foremost, I needed to talk with a friend. One of my college buddies also worked for the county sheriff's office. So I plied him over with some good BBQ and a few beers, and then asked him, 
Hypothetically speaking, what would happen to a company if it was found they were doing something illegal? Like, oh, selling ammunition when they shouldn't be, or something like that. He knew I'd recently left C Corp, and the circumstances of why I left, so it didn't take long for him to ask just what was going on. So I spilled the beans, even including the reported theft I had been accused of. He was on the edge of his seat, even going so far as to note that the district manager's actions itself were illegal, and told me to come to meet with my friend's boss the next day to give a statement. So I did just that. I laid out everything, told about the memo about not refusing sales, and then gave detailed information about the DM's call. The incident itself, and other things I had witnessed regarding illegal practices by the company, though not mentioned here. It took the better part of four hours to get everything told and typed out. By the way, the detective acted. I got the impression I had either given him one hell of a caseload or broken some case right open. It's fun. However, I wasn't done yet. I had one more call to make. That one would prove pretty simple and short, and involve me calling the lottery commission and telling them about the company's policy which went against the lottery agreement. I was assured they'd look into things, and that my information would be kept secret. I just had to sit back and wait. The fallout. Two or three weeks later, our local paper ran a story on the front page, talking about a multiple department sting that happened in our area. The sting was investigating illegal sales of weapons, alcohol, and ammunition to minors. In that raid, C Corp had been hit hard, with several of its stores being shut down and several managers and district managers being arrested on various charges tied to this illegal activity. The company itself was facing severe in the seven-figure range fines from the state, and it was being called into question whether or not they had the proper licenses to sell ammunition and firearms in the first place. The only mention of what the DM had said to me came in the form of one of the investigating officers noting that the company had resorted to blackmailing in an attempt to silence anyone who dared question the company policies or practices. The stores did remain open, but you could tell that the managers were seriously nervous about what the future held. Sales of ammunition and guns stopped completely, and overnight though. About a week after the raid by the police, lottery tickets of all kinds simply vanished from the stores. Big signs out front simply read we do not sell lotto. The validation machines were gone, and the scratch-off ticket areas lay empty. The lottery was not in the building. I can only guess what happened in that case, but I wouldn't be surprised if the lottery commission sent people in with winning tickets only to have those people turned away. The fact that they lost their lottery sales would point to it being a serious issue at the very least. That or the lottery commission decided to distance themselves from the company which was already under federal investigation. Yes, the ammunition and guns things went federal. Ultimately, the company was a shell of its former self. About half the gas stations ended up closing due to no longer being profitable, and what stations didn't close were just shells of their former selves. The company eventually declared bankruptcy after a final scandal brought them another round of state and federal fines. In that case, they were busted for price gouging after raising the gas price per gallon to about $6 a gallon in cities where they had no other competition. This happened just prior to a pending tropical storm. Today, it's been close to 15 years since this all went down. C Corp doesn't exist any longer. After declaring bankruptcy, most of the stores were sold off to a competitor, who ended up closing all but five or six of the stores due to redundancies. A whole host of, honestly, innocent people ended up out of work simply because the store decided to duck over one guy who wanted to do the right thing by the law and state policies. Several of the corporate staff were given two and three year suspended sentences, while others ended up paying personal fines on top of what the company was facing. The company has become something of a warning to others about what not to do when an employee voices a concern and above and beyond that, why it's a good idea to follow the letter of the law exactly as it's written, regardless of if it hinders your bottom line or not. I sometimes think back on the whole affair and wonder just what they hope to achieve with that blackmail attempt. Some part of me thinks that the DM honestly thought it was the best option and may have even been trying to help out an employee he liked. That was something that always bugs me, looking back. Every interaction I had with the guy was a good one right up to him grooming me to be another store manager. So maybe he was trying to protect me. Then again, he could have just been the a-hole I assumed, and that was him showing his true colors. I guess we'll never know. 
he moved out of the area a few years later, and I sure as hell wasn't about to talk to him again, not after everything that had happened. So, that's my story, how I destroyed an entire gas station chain. Now, here is the end of our today's first story, I hope you enjoyed it. Guys, let me know your opinion about this story in the comments section. And what do you think about OP's manager? Did he try to save OP or he was just being in a hole? I would love to read them. So before moving to the next story, please hit the like button and do subscribe to the channel to stay tuned with us for more awesome stories. Now, moving to our second story about OP's revenge on his manager. Because he wrongfully demoted OP to hire his friend for the same position. Now story. I worked nine years at a well-known company worldwide provider of various products. Won't name this company but it was a division of this company I worked for. I started at this company at the bottom as a tech, did my job well, and excelled upwards. After six years I was promoted into the national support group and also then excelled at this position. It was well paid and salary which was a very nice bump in pay, and the hours were great. After a year in the new position, I was promoted to a co-operator position which I shared with another which we were very good friends and got along very well. To this day we still do lunches and chat quite frequently. Now I was trained up on the in-house software that runs the dispatching of techs which was made by an in-house software developer the software used codes for areas and states. Very complex but for him, it worked, though no documentation whatsoever, no manual, nothing. The guy that had the position before I was leaving the company for a better offer so he took a month to train me on this software. And of course I wrote down all the codes for all the areas just so I didn't get anything wrong since there was no manual or instructions. He leaves the company. A year later the developer of this software dies from cancer. So now no one but myself knows how to use this software. And taking vacations was far and in between due to this issue. I constantly asked for a backup to be trained so they can do this job while I go on vacations. At this point I could only take two days at a time for vacation and my wedding was upcoming in eight months and we were taking a month-long honeymoon. No, got denied every time I requested a replacement to be trained. When my co-operator and I took over this new department it was in shambles. Our turnover for repairs was sitting around 8 days which upset a lot of customers due to these machines being used constantly during working hours. We brainstormed and came up with solutions to fix this and reduce downtimes dramatically. The bad thing about this is that it put extreme pressure on logistics to get parts overnight ed to techs in the field, which logistics manager was okay with, which he in turn hired enough guys to take this burden on and was working out pretty well. This turned out to be great. We reduced our downtime from 8 days to on average 2 days. Customers commented constantly about how much better our service was and how they were happy with how their repairs were going. Then it starts to go south from this point. My manager was looking to move up the ladder and need to hire someone for his position. Of course, I and my co-operator apply for the position since we know how to run this division and think we could do the job great. We both get overlooked for manager's friend which he had no experience in this division whatsoever. He was one of the logistics purchasers. He has no idea whatsoever to run our department nor any technical experience whatsoever. He of course gets this position and right off the bat this stupid idiot wants to change how we do things and reduce the strain on the logistics group. Co-operator and I immediately protest and oppose his changes with prejudice and vigor. Though this fell on deaf ears when he tells us to implement the changes I refuse and so does my co-operator. For weeks we argue with the manager's friend which is now my manager, and he gets upset and continuously fights with us to make the changes, which we again refuse. I emailed his manager and explained the situation and pointed out that it would increase repairs and our customers would be very unhappy. At this time we grew the base of our customers by 20 fold and our satisfaction rating on all our reviews was in the upper 90s. Though these emails and everything that co-operator and I were explaining went on deaf ears. At this point, manager's friend feels that I am the instigator of the disobedience, and that week I was called into a conference room with HR, the manager's friend and his manager. They informed me I was going to be demoted from operator to dispatcher, due to my inability to be a team player, and confrontational to my manager etc etc. So I said fine with me meant less work and the same pay so I'm okay with this. Now with this job, you had certain functions of the job that you could and could not do. 
You could only do what was assigned to you for that job description. Dispatchers could only dispatch calls to techs and not assign their calls that were my previous job. My co-operator at the time was in charge of escalations and onboarding techs and did not know the system I used to dispatch these calls. The next day I come in and sit at my desk, waiting for calls to be put on my board, knowing that there was no one now to dispatch calls to the dispatchers. After about four hours I get approached by manager's friend asking why I was not dispatching calls to everyone. I politely said, remember I got demoted I can't dispatch it's not part of my job description and I don't want to be fired for doing something that I am not allowed to do. The dread on his face could be seen as it streaks up his back and hits him full force. At this point he realized he just ducked up. Of course, his manager and HR did not know anything about this software that was developed in-house and had no instructions on how to use it. It was the backbone of this division's dispatching software without this no calls could be dispatched out whatsoever. The news is now getting around that no calls are being dispatched, and manager's friend's manager now enters and asks what is going on. He soon realizes as well what happened. They then call me back into the conference room and ask me to train a replacement. Of course, I refuse. The day ends and I go home. Next morning I show up for work on the dot, and they call me back in yet again, offering my position back and to please start dispatching calls as soon as possible. Of course, I refuse the promotion, pointing out key points that they brought up during my demotion meeting on why they were demoting me, and because of those points I felt I had to overcome them in order to be able to accept the promotion, and it would be a great time to focus on my abilities that they outlined. They were flabbergasted and frustrated clearly. They get upset and tell me that I am holding the company hostage and that they will have to take me to court. At this point per my contract I am now entitled to a lawyer, and they have to pay. In a few days go by of course no calls being dispatched they are now relying on emails and phone calls to get calls dispatched and parts ordered and it's pandemonium abound. It is adding so much more time to each call and ordering parts the whole system is falling apart. I finally get contacted by a lawyer telling me that he is to represent me and that he is being paid by the company I work for. But that he works for my period, that he cannot talk to them without my knowledge he cannot do anything against my interests and that he is being paid by them but works for me. He goes on to tell me that they can't force me to take a promotion and they can't fire me if I fulfill my obligations of the employment contract which were pretty easy just show up on time, take breaks in specified times and leave at the specified time. So I do. This goes on for a month when they are finally getting to the breaking point. Repairs are exceeding two weeks and customers are canceling their repair contracts due to service issues. They decided to demote me again to logistics. Now the manager of logistics is a good friend, and he thinks this is retaliation for all these issues so he just says to me to take a desk over in the corner, and do my thing whatever I wanted he wasn't going to punish me for their stupidity. We go to court, they present their case, and my lawyer presents mine. After two days the judge rules in favor of me and says that a company cannot force me into a job or do a job that I do not wish, and this would be considered enslavement. They press the judge to have me turn over the information to run the software that runs their division. The judge asked me if I had it written down. At this point I didn't have it, and I threw it away so I answered honestly to the judge. Though I did say I do remember how to use it and all the codes to dispatch since I did it for years it became like second nature. Judge asked me if I would be willing to write down the instructions. I politely said no, and the judge said okay that's it then. Upon coming back to work the next day, I decided to start looking for another job. After about a month I found a new position at another company making about 10% more and with better options, and also agreed to give me the month off with salary for my honeymoon. So I wrote up a resignation letter and sent it to my manager, his manager and the senior staff of the division and also the CEO of the company, explaining everything that went on and why I was leaving the company and wished them the best. That Friday I packed up my personal stuff and left. Two weeks later I get a call from the CEO of the company apologizing for what happened and that all this information had just come to light, and that the individuals involved were terminated. Manager's friend and his manager and the one above him which was sweet to my ears, and offered my job back, I politely declined. A few weeks after manager's friend was fired, I was told by my good friend and co-operator that he died from a drug overdose which is sad and completely not deserved no matter how much I hated him. 
The division I ran was merged into another division. A year later after it was not able to recover, 30% of the people that worked for that division were laid off or transferred to other divisions. My co-operator is still working for the same company though he said after this whole ordeal it never recovered and never was the same and had gone downhill dramatically. And he will be retiring this year. Now, here is the end of our second story. I hope you enjoyed it and let me know if you had any stories about your a whole manager. Or you can also share your opinion about the story in the comments section. So before leaving, please hit the like button and do subscribe to the channel to stay tuned with us for more awesome stories.